Hello, this is Dr. Stephen Cohen, and this video is to serve as an instructional video on optical coherence tomography scanning and the vitreous. The first point I'd like to make is that the OCT scans confocal optics eliminates the vitreous sometimes, and you don't see much there, even though the vitreous might be there. The OCT scan captures a fairly narrow window, and all the reflected light outside of that window is eliminated from that image. So as you see here with the top of the image disappearing, that may not be that there's no vitreous there. It may just be the scanner. In addition, this ultrasound is to show that the vitreous fills the eye and these gradations are about a millimeter and that's about what you see on the OCT scan, maybe a little bit more. It's important to realize if you don't see the vitreous, it doesn't mean the vitreous is not there. In this image, I just digitally faded the vitreous and then made it reappear. Realize that in order to optimize the visualization of the retina, it's not uncommon for the OCT scan to digitally change itself in a way that you don't see the vitreous, especially in eyes where the image isn't optimal, anything where there's a breakdown of the signal often leads to loss of the vitreous detail. The three things where I find the OCT scan are useful in assessing the vitreous are first looking for the presence or absence of a posterior vitreous separation. This can be especially helpful in someone with acute symptoms. Secondly, it shows vitreomacular traction beautifully. And then finally, I'd like to use the OCT scanner to look for vitreous cells. The vitreous is normally attached at the optic nerve, the macula, and the vessels. And this is where you might look for an attachment when you're looking for a posterior vitreous separation. Uh, this scan I captured over the optic nerve was from someone who was having some floaters, and I could see that the vitreous had partially separated but was still attached at the nerve, so we captured the scan over the nerve just for teaching purposes. I've included two scans in this video, one that shows a clear attachment of the vitreous in the center of the macula, but there's no symptoms in this patient because the outer retina is not affected. Unless the outer retina is somehow displaced by the vitreoretinal traction, the patients generally don't notice any vision change. The second example shows a clear outer retinal problem. There's a little tractional foveal detachment and you can see the forces of the traction from the vitreous are transmitted through the retina all the way to the outer retina and the photoreceptors are displaced. And this patient does have a dark spot. And then finally, looking at posterior vitreous cells, the OCT scanner is great for this. If I have a patient with uveitis, I have several patients with posterior uveitis. We sometimes actually follow the OCT scan to guide treatment. And then if there is a patient with a vitreous separation, like the one pictured here, the presence of posterior vitreous cells means that there's blood in the eye, which does increase the risk of a retinal tear. As you probably know, the probability of a retinal tear in a vitreous separation without a vitreous hemorrhage is about 2%, and with a vitreous hemorrhage is about 50%. So in review, the OCT scanners can show you vitreous anatomy, but don't always. Sometimes it's just the signal and you can't see the vitreous. And the three situations where I'd like to look at the vitreous are assessment of the presence or absence of a posterior vitreous separation, looking for vitreomacular traction, and finally, in a patient with uveitis or a vitreous separation, looking for the presence or absence of posterior vitreous cells. This is the first course on the OCT scanner. We're going to be moving down through the retina. Uh, the next video will be on the inner retina.